days will soon arrive. Tastes good. I like to call myself the Nigerian guy who's pretty much comfortable in the kitchen. So today, I am not going to be cooking for myself. I'm going to be cooking for a special someone. I know you guys like a love gossip, so that doesn't matter. I met this girl a while back. Um, she's originally Nigerian, but born and raised in America. So we've been talking, we've been getting a lot friendly for a while now. And um, when the idea of a first date came up, I asked her out on a date. And being that she had been um, talking about trying my food someday, I figured, hey, how about making you dinner? And she loved the idea. And of course, I'm always up for an interesting culinary adventure. So guys, wish me luck. From the past, I figured her favorite Nigerian meal is moi moi. So I'm gonna, you know, try my hands at uh, baking her some, not cooking. So I'm gonna bake some. I'm gonna try and uh, do a little bit of twist here and there, you know, to create something really, really special for her. And uh, to go with that is fish. Of course, more and more it works with fish. This fish is called the Dorado, of course, in Spanish. Uh, it's also called Mahi Mahi in some parts of the world. It's called dolphin fish. It's, this fish has got almost over 50 names. Uh, my first fishing experience on the Gulf of Guinea, yes, you heard that right, on the Gulf of Guinea, uh, was where I caught this. First experience, first catch. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, that's a pretty one. It's called the Mahi Mahi, like I said, and I was told that being my first catch, that it means a lot of luck. So um, I figured uh, it wasn't one of those uh, ones you just uh, dump in the pot and make for another meal. So I've kept it in my freezer for a long time waiting for a special moment. And I feel this is that special moment. Some shrimps. Um, this shrimp I'm going to use to garnish the moi moi, you know, give it some activity just to, you know, to act like we know what we're doing. Of course, the tomatoes, uh, the bell pepper and onions. Some butter in here. Of course, I like to say everything tastes better with butter. So guys, olives here for garnishing, spring onions, kill leaves, spinach, just in case. Also got some parsley for the fish. Here we have the beans, some cherry tomatoes, tomato paste, garlic of course for flavoring, chili peppers, ginger for taste, shred seasoning, thyme leaves, some crayfish, more seasoning cubes, some salt, and of course, a spread of the tools that I'll be using, guys. So um, it's about to go down. So first, I'm gonna chop up all of this before we get going, because of course, you're always best coordinated in the kitchen when you have everything laid out. So your timing is on point, guys. of this garlic just to get the juice out so next the onions some people don't like to see their onions in food so I'm just gonna make this all into the puree so with the onions cut this head something people don't realize about onions when you talk about uh, getting theory when you cut an onion says that it's because you cut this first but if you leave this thing on it's, you're not going to get any theory. The head is what makes it theory. So I'm just going to cut this big. No need wasting my time since I'm going to blend it at the end. I need a smaller knife. So this, uh, the seeds of the bell pepper be bitter so I like to think if I'm not mistaken if it's not the same one I'm talking about but the tatashe yes so we don't get some of the rustiness in here so 
So we'll get some cubes of butter in there. Okay, now the, the garlic and the ginger. Some of that good seasoning cubes go above it. So I have to remember that some of this is already salted, so I don't have to add more to the moi moi butter. Turn the oven on. Turn 10 minutes. Get a little bit of that spray oil on. So I like to put the tomato paste and blend with the beans uh, so I know exactly how much redness how much redness I'm getting before a drop of palm oil or two. Ooh, look at that guys. Look at that blend. So I'm gonna pour it all in here. All right, it's coming together. Yeah, so while we wait for that to get ready, I think I should grab a drink. Yeah, it's getting all toasty. Love it. All right, so well, like in two minutes, I'm gonna dump the shrimp in there to add to the flavor of the puree. So the idea is to get some of the shrimp flavor in here while the shrimp cooks for a few minutes, not fully done, the rest of it will get done in the moi moi while it bakes. So get some of that butter and shrimpy taste. There you go. So I have some of the shell on and some out. So the ones that are on will, will be part of the dressing of the fish bed, while the ones that I peeled We'll go into the moi moi. Ah, look at this shrimpy goodness. Yes, so um, I wish you guys could smell this through the camera, but sadly not. But then, what I smell is just what I want. So that flavor is going to translate. So I'm just going to pick out the shrimps. The shelled ones and the deshelled ones. We'll sort that out later. That one looks to be caked up. That shows there was an unfresh piece amongst them. So picking up this, I just wish you guys could smell this. Uh, anyways, I hope you enjoy what your eyes see because this is about to get the blend of its life. So, let's see that. Oh. Hmm. Never done this before, by the way. This is my first time and I am pretty much proud of myself if I do say so myself. So with this one being a puree, well, we don't need for the water, it's already soft enough and I want it as thick as possible. Does this happen to you guys when, um, for those that cook that is, when you're trying to turn something out of, um, something really nice out of uh, wherever it is in, onto another or doing anything in this kind of process, you find yourself licking your lips as though you're eating. That's one of those reflex moves when you're cooking. So, my tongue is actually reacting to my thoughts. Yeah, see, steamy hot. Because uh, I didn't put enough water, that could easily uh, cause some damage to your blender. It'd be very embarrassing if you were to have a first date and you made the food and she chokes from pepper. Bad sign. The best part. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna throw in a few more, a little bit more seasoning. So I'm gonna combine the red one for a bit more redness. Add some of the thyme leaves, dried thyme leaves for flavor. Crayfish, some extra seasoning cubes. Looking at the, 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 the matcha butter we have here, so 
and to make sure we get some taste out. Yeah, I know we're using butter for oil, but then a little bit of that touch adds to the taste and the color. So there we grab our palm oil. That should do. Local is best. I think I missed one thing, which I recently discovered works for binding, which is what? Eggs. Hmm. So I'm just gonna grab some from the fridge. I'm juggling them. Um, I used to be good at this. Should I? Should I not? That'll be a disaster. No. All right, so I'm gonna break some eggs in there to help bind it as it bakes. Yeah. Mm. Great. Love it. A little bit more of that butter. I think we need a little bit more of this as well. Never had to mix this much butter for anything. Battery. So, go here. I saw this in the store and it reminded me of my childhood. This is what Nigerian mothers use for moi moi. Besides the leaf, which is the traditional thing, and the perfect thing and the most healthy, by the way, this comes next. Foil is not very good, like I've heard. So um, the aluminum bowl does the magic for me. So I'm just gonna line this up, already washed. Well, now it's time for some of that salt goodness. Some of that good, good iodized salt. And as the Nigerian salt bay, I'm just gonna add some taste to your life. Moi, moi, do it. It feels like a workout. <laughs> and there is that last small one I like to call the pinky. I'm not sure we're gonna need this, but yeah, perhaps this will take all of this and some more. But if this were my mom's kitchen, Growing up, this will be for me as the last born. So they'll try to deceive you that it's a special one. That's why it's different from the rest. But no, you're just getting a smaller portion. And then you have to deal with your older ones, perhaps having cut a deal with you. You know, those crazy deals like if you use my catapult or my flute, uh, I'll have to take your meat for dinner. It's crazy, yeah? Nigerian home. But that, those, uh, those were the things that made it fun to grow up in Nigeria. I feel like I should dedicate this pinky to all the last bonds out there. Nothing does it more than try to use your hand. <laughs> Must I date myself? Or must I date someone else? Because I think I'm impressing myself. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna find the ones without the shell. All right, so just a little bit of a tail, just so it pops up. You know what? I, I kind of think I should wrap this up in bacon. Hmm. Interesting, okay. Let me grab some bacon and wrap this. Might look more interesting. Real quick. There you go. Look at that. Strippy goodness. How could I have not thought about this before? All right, to grab some of this and pull the first strip. So, just gonna roll this up here. What's amazing about this is like you're picking up bacon, but you don't know there's some shrimp in it. I haven't seen this anywhere, but I'm hoping this works. I don't know if there's any thing about seafood and bacon, but I hope there are no reactions. Uh. How about I do a double decker for the last born? So you think you have something small, for the last one, not knowing his bacon is double. Yes. So this is my, um, this is what I'm using as the onions in the more moi, so it's the spring onions. And create the ultimate butter flavor. 
case other ingredient, ingredients dominate the rest of it. I'm just going to use foil paper to cover it so before we dump it in the oven. So I grab my foil. You know what, I think I should probably grab a picture from my mama. Harvard Moi Moi loading. So this is gonna go in, uh, but then I'm gonna, I like to put some water in here. Not sure how that uh, heat translates, but, so it's gonna steam through, and even by the time the water dries out in the oven, it's fine. So we're about to bake the Mai Mai, yeah? We call it Mai Mai in Nigeria, it's Moi Moi though. All right, so time to get fishy. So I've thought about this for a long time. What I'm gonna do with this, it's looking a lot flatter. I think maybe the freezing for a long time still looks quite meaty. So um, I'm gonna chop this up a little bit to make sure the spice in. I think I should actually try to clean this color. I'm not comfortable with this color. I feel like uh, it looks like something I should frame and, and hang on a wall. Uh, the only color I know for fish is silver, and the only one I know for meat is red. So let's see if we can get this. Okay, it's actually working. So I'll just brush this off. And though perhaps the heat would help change it further, but then. Uh, I don't want any surprises after I'm done cooking. So I think I should try seeing if this perhaps works for the purples. See. You know, I, I, I actually went, uh, the first two times I went fishing, there were both Dorados, so my luck went up times two with fishing. And of course I've caught bigger fish since then. Uh, so I kind of think, uh, the superstition works. I'm not very sure how best to spice this, but um, it's quite confusing because her taste buds obviously will be different from the average Nigerian. So, you know what? I think I should call Toby. He's American Nigerian partly as well. So he's Nigerian, but of course, uh, born and bred in the US. I think he might get the right spicing for this. Especially being that I had given him my second catch. I caught a second one, by the way. So, um, call Toby. Ask. There's nothing wrong in asking questions and learning, so. Oh, yeah, T. Yo, T, what's up, bro? Not much, man. How's it? Good, good, good. So, uh, check this out, right? Um, I'm hosting this girl to dinner. I don't know if I mentioned a girl I met a while ago. She's uh, Nigerian, but uh, she lived and uh, she was born and bred in the US. So she's moving back and uh, I'm trying to have my first date. So uh, I chose to, uh, I decided to host her to dinner. And I am actually throwing in the Dorado. The first one I caught, I gave you the second one and I remember you made it already. So I was wondering, instead of spicing it up my own way, the Nigerian way, I should uh, consider her taste buds. And I figured you would know what's right for uh, an American taste bud, really. So um, I have here um, a regular seasoning. I have uh, spring onions. I have uh, some spinach. And I have some parsley to like stuff the belly of the fish with it so for some flavor. So is there anything else I might need, or would this really suffice? Well, I mean, the thing about the Dorado is that's a special fish, so I know the, ch I know the chick is probably special, too. Yo, yeah, she is special. The catch is special, too. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody's trying to get the best catch, I can see. Yeah. But uh, the Dorado is a simple fish. I mean, from, from, my, from my experience, it kind of already has a lot of flavor. Uh, it's fresh, so really, I would, I would probably just play on the natural flavors. Just enhance it with the herbs that you already mentioned, like parsley, a little butter, lemon, um, salt and pepper, and probably just keep it simple. So it, it'll carry pretty much any flavor that you put in there. But depending on like what else that you're you know trying to make. So if you want to do something a little spicier as a side, or you want to do something that has ah. a lot of 
of a more robust flavor profile. Ah, that's a good idea. I was going to throw on the, the, the puree I made that is quite spicy uh, on the fish, but it, it makes a lot of sense to keep it as a side in case she's not a pepper person, right? Yeah, for sure, man. So that, that, that fish is ready to go. I think whatever you do to it is going to taste amazing. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. Man. Quick, quick one. How did you make uh, that one? Uh, did you skin it? Did you uh, get the fillet out? Did you cut it? Because I'm making this one whole. I just only realized now that this fish has some skill. I didn't realize until I tried to get the color out. And it's been in the freezer for quite some months, like you know. Yeah, so the thing is with, with this type of fish that you catch deep sea fishing, I like to cook it the same day. I, mean, I, I know. So I, the last time that I caught it, or last time that you gave me your attention, um, I filleted it like same day within a couple of hours and I just pan seared it on the super super high. Nah. And I just allowed it to get across on the outside, but I actually pretty much kept it raw in this time. Okay. So it's like a sashimi sushi. Oh, sweet. But it was not the wasabi and things like that, but I think uh, the way that you're probably going to prepare it is going to come out, you know, top notch too. So you're good to go. Well, good luck to me then. I'm just going to throw it in. This is it. Like, I'm trying to get the, the whole colors out. I'm, I'm scraping it out, only to realize now it's got skills. So I'm going to take all this out and, uh, you know, pan sear it like on, with a double pan. So from what you've said now, I'm just going to not let it cook too long, even though the skin feels uh, kind of like a tough, but I feel like the moment fire hits it with some butter in there, it's gonna be great. So, sure, sure. thanks, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks. I'll let you know how it turns out and wish me luck. <laughs> Absolutely, with the fish and the girl. Everything. It's all fresh catch. <laughs> all right, bro. See you later. All right, let's take this out. So all of that fishy smell, all of that fishy smell. But well, I think I have the right uh, thing to treat it with. Very important to have sharp knives in the in the in the kitchen. It's uh, one of the most important things when you're going to cut because it's frustrating to do anything without a sharp knife if you have to cut something. Ah, uh, do I or do I not? Do I or do I not? Do I? Do I? Let's take out everything that's eerie. All right, let's get this out. I think I need something bigger for this. We're doing this on a chopping board, but impatience. 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 Uh, so uh, I think I'm going to cut this because uh, I'm trying to get it to fit into this double sided pan. But it doesn't, so. And moreover, some people don't like to see the head of a fish, so it looks scary to them. So I won't do it the way I care about it, or do it the way that is safe. So head off, I feel like a mother. Guys, this is not living in bondage. This is not living in bondage. I am not a head taker, but this fish. Take it out. There you go. Head out, a bit of a tail out. Fish seasoning. Get some of that spring onions in there. Apparently the belly of the fish is not so big, so we will not be using all the spinach. And some parsley. Just a little bit in there. Just a little bit in there. Finally, everything is better with butter. It's just like when you're checking out uh, if the cake is done. So if it goes in and comes out without any wetness, then it's done. This looks swole. Oh, look at that. You see that? I think we're ready to go. I'm just gonna leave it in the heat. I hope it works for our dear Dorado. That sounds like the title, the beginning of a letter. Dear Dorado, I hope this finds you well. Mm. Break this, I think we should break this. <clears throat> break that bone. 
get this in here. Some more butter. Just to oil the pan a bit. I think I should actually do this first. Let's not be too sure of the butter spreading fast. So, spray some of some oil on the pan. Make sure it doesn't stick. And our fish is ready to go on the burner. But first, just gonna let this few cherry tomatoes go in, cook there. Uh, I think it'd be great to add some onions. All right, guys, so we're done prepping the fish and there's just one more thing left. Take a wild guess, something that definitely goes with fish across the world, Africa, Europe, wherever it is. What do you think that is? Lemon. Yep. So, I almost forgot this. I'm just going to get some of the, the zest in there for flavor. So what this does is uh, it kind of like eliminates the, the fishy smell, right? So like the salt and the acid balance out each other, doing a little, you know, flavor dance in your taste bud. So yeah, that's the fishy trinity. The salt, sour, and sweet, they all go hand in hand. So let's put this in the burner. So guys, while we wait for the fish and the moi moi, while it's moi moi in the oven, I figure we talk a little bit about this cultural stereotypes and uh, you know, like this obviously is awkward for some people. Uh, by awkward I mean, by this I mean, you know, having a girl over at your house for the first date. Uh, but I think it, it depends on a lot of things, a lot of factors, like how long you've met the girl and everything. I know uh, my, my boys and I, we've had this conversation a few times, even though I didn't know at the time that this would be my case. Uh, and some people actually think, and in fact, between my boys back home and people I've uh, interacted with within the same conversation across the world, in, uh, you know, in my line of travel, I find that it all differs from place to place before we break it down to, uh, to people to people or individuality. You know, some cultures will say, oh no, hell no, that's bad. Some will say, oh, that's cheap for a first date. Why don't you take her to a fancy restaurant? You know, I think it, it, it kind of like boils down more to the connection you have, the kind of rapport, you know, like I said, individuality. I'm pretty much a home bunny. I'm more, I'm more of the guy that will want to have my private life contained within my private space, you know, but in this case, I figure it's a case of build up and of course, uh, she's saying, you know, she would uh, like to try my food sometime. So I understood that she was one that appreciated that kind of care and personal touch to uh, affection. But yeah, in France, it's different. It's all different cultures with different understandings. You know, in Nigeria, it's a bit awkward. Not that the girl may not want to come, but she'll be probably bothered about what would you think of me? So in this case, it's up to me to make sure I don't prove any stereotypes you know, about having a girl over, trying to be funny with her beyond what she wants or expected, you know, that kind of thing. And this is something I'm looking at, you know, you know, making it work. Uh, hopefully uh, it's different when we meet, you know, from uh, chats and talks and everything. So guys, uh, I really want to know what you guys think. Uh, do you think it's appropriate to invite a girl over? Would you do it? And if you're a girl, would you go over to a guy's house that whether you like him or you were just checking him out, for the first date, so you guys tell me, I mean, with some other girl, perhaps, I may not do the same thing, but I think it's all about the person you're connecting with and what you think. Yeah, so you tell me what you think, and um, while I am here smelling all fishy, I think I need to go shower because my date will soon arrive and I need to look as clean as F for her. So guys, I'll see you soon.
So guys, what do you think? Think I did good? All right, let's see about that. I hope she's impressed. She's here, guys. Wish me luck.